It's okay, I can use this mic. Hi everyone. We also describe the list as uh, the old boys club for women, I think is an apt description as well. Um, so just while we're setting up here, welcome. Uh, we have three panelists today, all amazing. Uh, the first is CEO of Ozon, which come. Um, she described to me as the Russian combination of Amazon, Expedia, and FedEx. So that is a trifecta. <laughs> um, also, we have Stephanie Tramacek, who is the uh, country manager for Pinterest in France. And we all set. Sorry. And Adora <laughs> Chung, CEO and founder of HomeJoy, uh, which is a platform that connects people with home service professionals, which I think we can all appreciate. Let me just get <laughs> seated. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Get that. Okay, so welcome everyone. So we we're gonna talk a little bit today, uh, I just spoke about um, the com work, work and uh, creative life and the combination of the two, whether that's possible. I think where balance is a word that gets uh, thrown around frequently, particularly with women. And uh, how do we find that balance between work life, what we find creatively satisfying? Is it possible to find that balance? Uh, are the new companies that we're talking about now, do we find that balance? Do these companies foster that in the workplace? And how do we go about that? And on the flip side of that, to be a little contrary, are, is this, are we just sort of doing lip service to the idea of being creative and finding creative satisfaction is just something we tell ourselves because we have all of this connection now and all of these apps and all of these ways to, to uh, feel creative. Are we actually integrating it into our lives in ways that are satisfying? So that's kind of where I want to start with the three of you. Do you, you, run, you all run companies. How, what importance do you place on creativity in the workplace and how do you foster it? Go ahead, Stephanie. Okay, so I'm sorry, representing myself, maybe. So I'm a country manager for France. So my name is Stephanie Kramicek. Um, so Pinterest, I don't know if everyone is familiar with it. Uh, it's a discovery discovery tool uh, to manage, to plan your life project, like a travel uh, that you want to do for your next vacation, a project with your kid or your own uh, redecoration that you want to do uh, for your new own house. So, uh, so what we all about Pinterest is uh, interest and creativity. We help people to find new ideas, ideas they could not have by themselves, ideas that you discover, which is the meaning of discovery, just to find something unexpectedly. And so creativity is very important for us uh, as we work for Pinterest. Uh, we are the first users of Pinterest, I would say. Every employee are uh, using Pinterest for personal usage uh, and to develop uh, an interest. And in the idea of developing an interest, is finding ideas, inspiration, uh, and to develop them, but also to, to act on it. To, we help people to use their inspiration in their daily life uh, to plan their life. And at Pinterest, we try to everyone also to go and do something, uh, something they find on Pinterest and develop themselves in their life um, to have more creativity. And we were discussing before the panel, and, and every time uh, we are, you are more creative as a professional when you do something on your life which is not related to work. And everything you will discover in your personal life uh, should, and I will say, I will in, in, in advise everyone to follow that, should impact strongly what you do on your work. Uh, um, I can talk about my profile later, but it has been my case uh, for me. And I think creativity is something also we try to boost at the workplace uh, through projects. We have makeathons uh, where pro people pro uh, work together and collaborate in cross-functionality. Uh, uh, so for example, the animated GIF uh, uh, capabilities capabilities, sorry, on pins uh, uh, that was launch launched this year came from a makeathon. Uh, we are doing pinlanthropy um, project. Uh, we have um, studio nights where people can pursue 
whatever interest they have, and with groups of people in nights, during nights uh, at, at Pinterest, in the office, they do stuff together. Um, and so there are many, many other projects where we help people do, in the workplace to be more creative. Another one is just to have a creative workplace environment, offices. All our meeting rooms are very creative, and I think being in an environment where everyone is creative and the place, the workplace is also the office is creative, help you to be also more creative. And the last point is like whenever every three months we revisit our objective, our goals, and uh, what what is the roadmap, what we want to do, uh, we always go off-site. Off-site helps also a lot for the creativity. What does off-site mean? Off-site is that it's just not be at the office. Does off-site mean the beach? <laughs> <laughs> In France, less. <laughs> no, 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 but off-site is like going somewhere that you do something together. Like, uh, for example, one team, one engineering team went to a place in San Francisco where they have huge Lego bricks and they build something together. And then it's, it's helped to bring team building together, but also to work on your roadmap, on your goals, on, on some things that is not your workplace. So it helps to be open-minded and to also ha have critiques and the feedback, receive better as a feedback, so, uh, and to, to go for better, I would say. Emel, your business is so enormous and has so many uh, sort of different trajectories. Are you able to incorporate sort of a creative mindset into that and, then, and, and have it trickle down to the company in any way, do you find? I think actually we don't really have a choice because in, in today's world, everything is so ambiguous. There is no trend. It's becoming harder and harder to predict what's going to happen next month, next year, let alone in the next five years because as every company with a board, board member asks you to do a five-year plan, which in our industry sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense. And you have to be creative because this uh, constant chaos this lack of certainty that is really at the core of the world we're evolving in require for people who want to survive. And it's not necessarily uh, a very nice thing to say, but if you want to survive in that environment, you have to be creative because what you learned yesterday is not what you're going to need tomorrow. And the only way you can live with this ambiguity is by being super, uh, super creative, super flexible. Um, and so I guess we, we have, we have two and a half thousand employees. Uh, I wish I could say they're all super creative. Um, but what I can say for sure is that they're all super flexible, and this flexibility generates a lot of creativity because they always have to find a new way to a new problem they could potentially never have imagined before. Mm -hmm. And Adora, um, y your company is much smaller. I mean, how, how many employees do you have in your company we now? We have 150 employees. So it's, it's, it's not tiny by any stretch, no. but it, it, I, my assumption is on that level, and certainly having worked in startups, you, creativity and sort of nimbleness is an absolute must to grow your company. Do you, do, is that, do you demand that almost from your employees? Is that like a, a non-negotiable when you're hiring? Most definitely. I believe that uh, creative, creativity spurs innovation. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're in a small startup environment, everyone must be innovative or else you're not going to move very fast or very far. And so the way we do it at HomeJoy is that, you know, while everybody is tasked with, you know, the end result should kind of look like this, they're given a lot of room and a lot of space and they're expected to be autonomous in the way they, uh, you know, they're just expected to be independent thinkers mm -hmm. and just think of solutions. And I find that if you box people and tell them exactly what they need to do, they will just follow those rules and not think outside of the box. And if you, again, if you want to innovate, um, you can iterate very well in that manner, but if you want to innovate and, you know, reach sort of, you know, you, you can maximize for you know, local maxima or you can you know, optimize for the global maxima and just take risks. And for that to happen, you have to be very, you have to have everyone to be creative. And I think too, your company feels, it's, it's a platform for people to find home services essentially, which uh, a lot of those home services traditionally have been the responsibility of women. And we're currently living in a world where women are working as many hours as men, if not more, and then you add on childcare. So do you see a future industry sort of stepping in to take over those duties to allow women 
uh, more time to be creative maybe is not the right phrase, but more time to um, invest in what interests them as opposed to yes. cleaning the house. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, I think in the past century, we've seen technology um, allow women to be more free and be able to do other things. So like since the 1900s, we've had in inventions like the microwave, frozen food, refrigerators, electrical appliances. And I think, you know, in the 1900s, women were spending 60 hours a week on household chores, and now they only spend maybe 12 to 16 hours. Um, and so now it's a time, you know, to, to whittle that down to zero is, uh, you know, hardware and technologies like that can't take down that to zero. Someone still has to do the work, um, and it's often the woman that has to do it. And so HomeJoy has been always created to, you know, we have a mission of making home life better and happier. And by doing that, or the way we do that is by providing service professionals who love doing that work and are very good at doing that work and allowing people like yourself to you know, pursue your passions. Like if you want to write a book or if you want to spend more time with your kids, you're allowed to do that um, because that time is valuable and you can just have someone else do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and at the same time, the, the women or the people that are providing those services are allowed more control over their own Yes, time. exactly. And I think that's what I'm actually most passionate about with HomeJoy is that we provide a place for flexible work. And so we have a lot of moms on our platform, for example, who can't work certain hours of the day. And so they can't have their regular nine to five job. And so allowing them to just tell us, they, I mean, they literally just tell us when they want to work and exactly where they want to work. And then we just are able to provide that, those opportunities to them. So that brings up an interesting topic. I'm, and I, I think sometimes we spoke a little bit about this before the panel, but this idea of what is the future workday going to look like? We have all these tools at our disposal, but equally we have women running major companies and sort of determining the structure of the company, the structure of the workday. And I think uh, up until very recently, the way, especially in the States, the way we view the workday is primarily geared towards sort of the male experience of he gets to go to work, he has his hours, there's somebody at home to take care, and that's no longer the case. So I'm wondering, I would, how do you all envision, when you talk about a five-year plan, which is hard to come up with, but how do you, how do you when I say what does the, um, the future workday look like in five years to the three of you, and how is that influenced, or will it be influenced by sort of the rise of women in powerful positions in business? Stephanie. I think that um, flexibility is very important. Uh, we don't have any more like these nine to five where you work only and then after your life where you don't work at all. I think now the balance uh, is about be able when, you, when it's necessary, so not always, but be able to somehow mix a little uh, and that's where you have more the balance. If you need to bring your child to the doctor, you need to have the flexibility to take that one hour uh, to bring him to, to the doctor. And it means that after you will be at home with your computer working. Uh, I think it's the employer that needs to have the, bring this flexibility. Uh, it Maybe it's not all the time and should be like controlled because it could be like used uh, uh, not to a proper way. But flexibility is very important. I think also the technology is very important. We know we all have our mobile phones. It is our life with us. Uh, like, yeah, you wake up. Like when I wake up, I check my emails to, to see if there was some important, very urgent emails from the US with the nine hours difference. It's very important to check. Uh, and then after I go to work, um, I work. If I always have a connection with my husband during the day uh, at uh, Pinterest. We use Google products or Hangout, but I use Skype with my husband so I can chat with him if there is something urgent or whatever, or just like a kiss during the day to keep this connection with my, my personal life um, and be able to to come back home not too late. Uh, I have a child that is uh, seven years old, so I always try to manage to come back when he's having dinner or just after his dinner, before he's going to bed, so we can have some time together. Uh, and then after I go back to work if I need to, uh, which is most of the time. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I am okay with that as long as uh, I can also uh, find time during the work day, during those nine to five, which is not, I'm not working nine to five, but 
let's say, this work day when I need to see a friend or if I need to do something urgent personally, I, I, have, I need to have the flexibility to do that. Um, I, do you see a time when a large company could have that level of flexibility with hours of people determining their own hours? Do you, is that a practical expectation? <laughs> that's, the, that's the billion dollar um, question. <laughs> uh, I think, first of all, this idea of flexibility is some, somehow uh, a bit of an illusion because I think the flexibility that you're being given is basically the flexibility to work 24-7. Um, and it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm a workaholic, so I have my phone and my BlackBerry. I mean, I don't have a BlackBerry anymore. I used to have my BlackBerry, uh, my, my iPhone, my iPad, my two computers, and it's great, and I'm connected 24-7. Uh, but what that means is that I work like crazy, and probably a lot of our employees do too. So I think this idea of flexibility is really uh, one to manipulate with, uh, with care. Now, when it comes to what is that? I mean for the for the work day and whether big companies can influence it. Um, I mean, clearly, when you run a big company, you have the power to decide the schedule of your employees, uh, but you want them to work hard. You want them to work probably as much as you do, uh, or at least you want them to be very committed. And it's really hard to say, yeah, that's fine, take the day off, uh, I'll, I'll work for you. And I think um, whether you're a small company or a big company, it doesn't really change anything. You, you, we are in a world where we expect people to be working harder and harder and harder, and technology has just made it easier. Whether it's a good thing or not, I don't know. I mean, I'm very pro-technology. I run an IT company. But if, if I step back for a minute and think about how that impacts our life, I'm not so sure. On the positive side, I can see like people looking at me with sad eyes. Um, if you think, let's take a, a tech analogy. If you look at the way software used to be developed, uh, Software used to be developed in a very, what we call, waterfall process. So you would first have the people designing the spec and deciding how the product, what would be the, the purpose of the product. Then you would have another team, not the first one, a second team that would uh, define uh, the visual specification of your product. Then you would have a third team, which would be the engineer team that would actually build the product. And then you would have the testing team uh, that would tell you, well, that's horrible, you need to do everything again. So that was the, the, the typical waterfall waterfall process, which was a very rigid process, and everybody was depending on everybody. And, and that changed. That's the way Microsoft used to develop their product, and you see how great they are. Uh, but if you look at the way it's working now, we move into what we call the agile system, where pretty much everybody interacts with everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying it a bit, but uh, fundamentally what that means is that uh, people and connection become a lot more important than tool and processes. So we got, we gain a lot more flexibility and creativity. Coming back to your to your first uh, your first question, we came to an environment where uh, what the individual brings to the table is actually a lot more important than it was before, and the world is very much in an agile state. If you look at it, it's just moving all all around, and everybody's connected, and you need to catch the train all the time. That makes it super exciting. That, made, that also makes it uh, very tiring. And for a lot of people, it feels like there is a lot of loss and a lot of fear. So it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering if, because that was, I got tired thinking of what you were just describing, made me feel tired. <laughs> and uh, just as I was coming in, Carlos Slim, there was, uh, had, uh, he, you know, biggest businessman in Mexico, had, is advocating for a three-day work week. And I wonder if, if when we somehow get to a point where we can place a value on creativity in terms of we don't define work as being always on, we define the value of it being off, if that's, we, we can envision sort of a time when as much value is placed being off your computer as being on in order to facilitate sort of more work. We talked about this a little bit, how in France, uh, the productivity, the, there's more time off taken together, but the productivity maybe is a little bit higher when you're on. And I'm wondering if there's a way that we can all be French that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are French because we, we, 
we are French. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I want to demystify that we, we say that French people uh, take a lot of vacation. If you look at the number, in fact, we have 25 days of vacation granted by law. Um, but in the US, there, you also have 25 days, but it's mostly including holidays. So you have maybe one week of, uh, from your employer, the rest is holidays. So it means that in the US, the possibility to take vacation is like short vacation. It's always a long weekend or a week. Uh, in France, because we can choose the day when we want to take vacation, and in Germany, I think it's the same, we take longer vacation. So it means that most of the population are taking longer vacation, especially in summer. So we have a problem, like in France, when we want to work during summer, it's very difficult because when you call someone, they are in vacation. So the business is also going, uh, so slowing down. So there are periods where we have higher activity, and so we have to work more and be more productivity because we have to deliver more on the business side at that period because we know that there will be a period where it will be slower but for everything it will be slower. And then after it's coming back. So it's basically summer and Christmas are very too low activity period. And so you somehow compensate with a higher productivity during the other time of the year. Whereas in the US, you always have the business here, people to buy, people to use your service. They are all, almost always here, except maybe in Christmas. Uh, so it, it makes things different and force us maybe to be more productive. Um, and to be less in a very uh, flat uh, usage of our time, uh, but sometimes to really work more, sometimes a little less. And I think it's all about flexibility we were talking uh, about. Uh, uh, because it's, it's also, we, have this, we need to have this flexibility because of the business and, and the way that it's uh, the business in, in our country. I would say it's more for European countries is the, the case. Um, and I, I would just use my time to comment uh, on your um, comment. I think I made an assumption that flexibility is great when you're passionate with your work. Uh, we, we talk about life and, be, and work and be successful in your work and how to be um, very good in your life balance and feel you have a life, uh, or at least have a life truly. Uh, I think if you are passionate with your work, if you uh, bloom in your work, if you have the, the dream of your, your, your dream job, then you don't mind working a little more. Uh, and I think everyone should find their dream job. It's easy to say. I think I've been in a way where like a long time ago, I, I was not at all in my dream job. I think I managed to change that. It's a hard work. It's first you have to understand who you are, uh, because what will be your dream job? A lot of people are lost with that. Uh, but uh, maybe using Pinterest, you understand better what is your interest, and then after you can use that. No, but that's true. It's my story. So, <laughs> and uh, and you can really like tailor to what are the fields you feel more comfortable and trying to find a way. It's hard work, but to change the way you work and the situation. Build a blog, build, then work a column, I mean, write a column in a magazine, work, help someone build their startup on your free time, and then it develops you the competencies that you will feel more uh, energized. And now, if you build your job, your dream job, then you don't have this uh, sense of I'm spending too much time on my work, because your life is somehow your work also, and so you need to feel empowered. Yes. And that dovetails nicely into the question I want to ask, which is for people, I think, we, we've, as we've said, the workplace has changed so significantly in the last 10 years, it's almost unrecognizable to people who came into it 10 years ago. So as three women in charge of companies, what are you looking for? What's the, the uh, quality you most value in somebody you're looking to hire or bring into your company? We talk, I mean, the, the discussion now is all about coding and teaching kids to code and the younger grades and how important coding is. But I'm wondering, do you, is that true? Is that the, the number one thing you're looking for? What is the quality you're looking for? Um, well, there are many functions in the company and engineering is not the only one. Although I'm personally an engineer myself and so I, um, I value that highly uh, amongst people. But I, I don't think it's a requirement. I think, you know, it's more of a requirement that you're, intelligent and that you can think you're on your own feet and think outside of the box. And so uh, I look more for energy, passion, um, for whatever position that you're trying to, uh, tr trying to do. 
and, 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 and always believe that this is the place where you're going to feel the most challenge. Like, it should be the best time of your life that you're working at home, Joy. And so those are the types of people that I look for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned a few things. We're looking for extremely flexible people. Uh, that, how do you define flexibility? If someone's coming to you to apply for a job, how do they, how do they impart to you that they are flexible? <laughs> I usually ask them a question, uh, which is, tell me what's the uh, um, biggest success in your life, uh, in your work life, and what's the biggest failure? And tell me what you learn from both of them. And what I find interesting is to figure out how people adapt to changing situation and to success and failure. This is what we call flexibility. It's not, it's not about the working hours. It's about um, if that person encounter a new problem, and they're certainly going to encounter a lot of new problems in our environment, are they capable of inventing something else? Are they capable to say, OK, that's how we've done it for the last 10 years? Uh, actually, 16 years. Ozone, Ozone is 16 years old. Uh, so that's how we did it for the last 16 years. But that's not working anymore in the current ecosystem. So we need to change something. And so this flexibility, this capacity to say, the thing I spent my life on for the last six months doesn't make any sense. Let's do it otherwise is fundamental. We need these people to be flexible. We need them to like learning, um, again, because what you learned yesterday is probably not what you're going to need tomorrow. Uh, we need them to be highly optimistic, uh, because in a world that keeps changing, uh, if you're not optimistic, gosh, your life is going to be difficult. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to be excited by what's going on. So we want people who feel this excitement and who feel that the future is going to be bright because they can do something about it. And we want people who are resilient. Uh, because without this also same thing, in a world that keeps changing, uh, you want people who can adapt to it and, and still always um, uh, fall back on their feet. So definitely. Yeah, something that is um, missing maybe is also the ability to learn. I think uh, we are in an environment where we have to create everything. So everything is changing, the technology, everything is changing fast. So you need to learn and to create. So this flexibility adaptation to a problem and turning a problem into a solution uh, and the dedication of the people also, the talents should be also dedicated to their work. Uh, so that's why you need to be passionate about their work. Uh, but I think one, one point also is the ability to learn. Uh, it's in all, not only engineering, but in all uh, work. OK, we're going to go to questions in a second. But I want to ask a very practical question, which is, what is the, the, the one thing each of you do every day, or the one app you use, or the one thing maybe you wish you had to, to keep your life in balance, because you all lead extraordinarily, we all do lead extraordinarily busy lives. And what's your little sort of secret that sort of keeps it from spinning off the rails at times? Well, I wish I had more hours in the day. Um, <laughs> but since I can't do that practically, um, honestly, I, th I think it's just working out is it keeps me sane and gives me, I, I wake up really early and go work out, and it keeps me energized for the rest of the day. Uh -huh. Not an app. I don't think there's an app that can help you, you naps? much. T naps? Yeah. No, I don't take naps. I wish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I have. In grad, really school, great, in grad yeah. school, I trained myself to sleep only three to four hours a night. And so that's given me 20 to 25 percent more time to do ra random things than most people. Um, so yeah, oh. that's my, if I have a superpower, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, I switch off my uh, laptop and my mobile phone every Friday night, and I switch it on back again on Sunday. And that's, that's the way so to do it. it off, yeah. And how hard is that? The, at the beginning, it was really hard. Uh -huh. But now it's not, because it's the time I have for my husband, the time I have for myself, the time I have for my friends. Uh, and I mean, I, to be honest, my uh, people can always call me, but there is no email. So I don't check my emails. I don't go on the internet. I just like have a full 24 hours of, let's just think about something else, because the world is not only about coding and big businesses and, and all that stuff. And would you be OK if all your employees did that, too? I expect them to do yeah. that. I hope they're doing that. Uh -huh. But I mean, to be honest, I, I, 
I also expect them to be checking their email at 11 o'clock in the evening during work day, so I'm probably not the best benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I tend not to close my computer, but like I tend in the weekend to spend more time with my son and my husband uh, also, but I do check some email in, uh, in the Sunday evening. Uh, <laughs> the US tends to work a lot on the weekend. Um, and um, yeah, I think it's uh, two things. Um, one, I already talked, I, I, it's important to keep the connection with, uh, with your partner in life. Uh, I think we work uh, both together a lot, so if we don't keep the communication during the day, even if it's just like small kisses that we send, uh, it's important to keep the connection, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, the other one, it will feel cheesy, but it's uh, Pinterest. Uh, I was Before joining Pinterest, I was a fan of Pinterest. Uh, and I can, it's, it's a way for me, I'm using it personally uh, to find projects to do with my kids uh, over the weekend, organizing his birthday party, for example, to find good ideas and be a good mom, like this, like the other mom that uh, have like great uh, birthday party ever uh, that we do together. Um, we find our vacation together with my husband through Pinterest. And personally, I love home decor. Uh, luckily, we are buying a new apartment right now. And so I'm, I'm finding all those cool ideas on Pinterest. And I love that. Instead of uh, looking at magazine, that takes me more time, I'm using Pinterest. And before the night, I'm just checking. And all those beautiful images and uh, even fashion ideas, like, it's, it's helped me to be connected with what is not work. It, it somehow worked for me, but it, it's, it's related me like to what exists in the world that I don't have to look, how to look fancy and so on. I don't have the time to do that, but with Pinterest before the night, so I, I can sleep with really nice picture and thinking of things I love. <laughs> that sold, that was excellent spokesperson. <laughs> do we have any questions? Do we have a microphone anywhere for questions? No? We're all satisfied with our work-life balance? <laughs> oh. Yeah, one question. How can you train yourself to only sleep three to four hours a night? <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's like training yourself to run a marathon. You run a little bit more each week. And so the way I did it was I started with seven hours and I would just take off 10 minutes every week or every other week until I got it down to four hours. And so I've made, I, couldn't get, I can't get it down less than four hours though. It's, I've tried, but four hours is the maximum usually. <laughs> Incremental approach basically. Thank you very much for this engaging and discussion on this very important topic. I have a question for all of you from the perspective of those of us who are managers in the room. And I recently read a quote given to me by a friend of mine that says the following, if you really want to change people's lives, be a manager. You have an opportunity for 10 hours each day or longer in some of your cases to structure their work so that when they come home, they have a higher degree of self-esteem because they accomplished something that matters to people. I was wondering if each of you could reflect on that topic and share with us how you may incorporate that in your own management philosophy. I, I fully agree. I think, again, no matter how cutting edge the technology you're developing is, what's fundamentally important is the people behind the technology. And you can spend as many hours as you want on the code. Uh, as many hours as you want in, in meetings talking about processes and uh, workflows and five-year plans and all that stuff. At the end of the day, your company is never is as successful as your employees want it to be, so you need to really focus on them. What that means uh, more in a more concrete way is that um, Promoting your employees and giving them salary is unfortunately not enough anymore. Uh, you actually really need to think about uh, what, is, what is it for them in the job you're offering them that makes them coming home, uh, coming to work in the morning and going home and still coming back the next morning after they spend the evening at home. So it means more empathy. I think uh, when we talk a lot about this technology, the word we tend to forget is the word empathy. 
how do you put yourself in the shoes of the people you're managing and what is in, in this deal for them apart from the salary. So it can be learning opportunities, it can be new challenges, it can be, for some of them, it's peaceful environment. We, in our warehouse, we have 800 people working and for some of these women, what we bring them is stability. It's the fact that they're gonna get a salary at the end of the month, that uh, they are respected, that we don't hassle them. And this stability that we're offering them in the Russian environment is actually extremely extremely important. So I think there is no secret recipe, but this, this emphasis on empathy has never been more important today because of the importance of technology that makes us forget about the human. I, I, oh, you want to go? Go ahead. Um, I think it's... Um, it's about also giving the bigger picture. Um, you, when you work, you, you, you go fast and you have so much to do on your to-do list on a, on a daily basis that you forget about why you are doing this. And, and sometimes, as a manager, I mean, every week you have to come back to the bigger, bigger picture, why we are doing this and uh, how we are changing the world, how fast we are, but like, um, what you're doing is improving uh, the bigger picture. And last point is like feedback, positive feedback. We always want to improve everything. So here is what we need to improve, good. But what is most important is also the positive feedback. What has been great, uh, and, and not just like great, you've done a great job, it's also why, and show it publicly. People need to have recognition, and it's very important to give them that also. Very quickly, you know, just like you know, house workers, for us on the contractors, the house cleaners on our platform, we provide, like, we're, very, we're most passionate about helping them because um, it, it provides stability in their lives and be able to support their families. Um, and so for the employees at HomeJoy, that's what, again, that's what we're passionate about. And at the end of the day, it's about maximizing impact. And the day-to-day -day is always a grind. And maybe you don't think about that impact like every single second. You probably um, don't have time to do that. But when you go home or at the end of the week after a grueling week, you should feel like you've made that impact. Um, and you can do that in a number of ways. And most likely, you know, the job that you have hopefully contributed to that. And similarly at HomeJoy, you know, we believe that it's about maximizing impact and not maximizing pure profit per se. And so we actually have employees donate. They, they spend 1% of their time um, volunteering um, out in the community and helping our communities and stuff like that. And so overall, we, we believe, or I believe that, you know, even though 1% of that time they could have used it to code or do whatever, that actually, you know, in terms of maximizing impact, that it was better off just, you know, helping out in the community and stuff like that. And so that's, that's how we look at it. Great. Thank you all. Uh, time is up. This was Thanks. wonderful. Now, go forth and balance. <laughs>